has brought in a new family. I always think it's quite fascinating how soaps bring in uh, new families. Have you had a look in here lately? Well, what's up, Bob? Hello. Something wrong? Yes, there is something wrong. The condition of these ewes in here. There's one dead and some of them are down. You know, they usually have that bit right at the end of a scene, right at the end of a programme, when you see them arriving and they sort of... and then it cuts. But if I were you, I'd sack that cowboy of a manager. He's nothing but a hooligan. Oh, I doubt it. You see, he's my son. The Tates were, they were very, very 80s. They were very, they were, it was very sort of Dynasty Dallas sort of inspired. We'll have this big business family, except we'll put them in barber jackets and cardigans and they won't quite be as glamorous. I thought you might like something before the rush starts. I was so pleased when they arrived because we actually got some glamour. Well, either his neck's too small or this tie's too big. When the Tates arrived in Emmerdale, it was like, you know, someone from Mars had turned up or someone from Dallas had turned up. You know, they just reeked of sex and money and power. And new technology. Tates are such a great family. I, 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 I love the Tate family, all the kind of history of that family and all their villainy. Um, you know, they are the old-fashioned lords of the manor. Well, perhaps not that respect. Mm. I do hope this will be taken in the right spirit. Why shouldn't they take it in the right spirit? We were brought in it simply, I think, to, um, you know, make it a much broader picture than what it was. You know, the, the soft sort of um, Yorkshire Dales scene um, needed to be balanced with some strong storylines. With the Tates came Kim, Emma Dale's queen bitch. She was very beautiful. She was blonde. Um, she looked very good in jodhpurs. I remember reading with Norman Bowler, who played Frank, and we just went through a couple of scenes once. And then um, they said, would, would you like to go and wait outside? And I saw this girl that was in a flat cap and had the plait and almost welly boots, you know, and she just looked like Emmerdale Farm. Well, not a farm, but you know what I mean. And I thought, oh, God, well, she's bound to get it then. She was 20 years younger than her husband, and so she was going to have a lot of affairs. And so she did. Well, the Tates had two main impacts. You know, Frank came in and took everyone's money, took over all the businesses, and then Kim was there just to sleep with everyone and ruin everyone's marriage. Including her own. In the hotel, see how Dave was doing. Well, where are you now, Frank? Looking for his room. Any messages? So, um, did everything go well at the accountants? She was quite smouldery, and you knew underneath there's going to be, there was going to be a lot of sexuality there. There was something, I mean, it was all bubbling under the surface. And she rose to the occasion. Bye-bye, love. I can't believe it. I knew it was going to happen. Kim, why did you have to call me? But everyone loves a bitch. They all like the nasty characters. I mean, I loved JR and I loved Alexis Colby. I thought they were great. And um, when I beat them in a poll once, I was like, yes! <laughs> Look at me. Of course I lied. I had to. Everything I've ever done, I've done for us. What did you expect? A fairy tale ending? Walking into the sunset holding hands? Sorry, David. Time to grow up. I think everybody warms to a bitch. I don't know why. Men especially. Never thought I'd agree with Frank, but he is right. You are a bitch. I think there's got to be an element of you to base a character on. And then when you get the scripts, they obviously adapt it as to how the characters are going or what their storylines are. So, um, yeah, there's a, there's a, there was an element, a small element. I mean, obviously we looked like each other. Um, but I think towards the end, she was getting more and more <laughs> camp and over the top. Suddenly, you, you wind on two or three years and, and, you know, Zoe was suddenly a lesbian. Chris was in a wheelchair, paralysed, and became really twisted and bitter. Um, Frank had became this kind of quite tough businessman. Trouble? As if I didn't have enough. The one person, I think, who Frank really did trust and did love um, was Zoe. His daughter. Zoe, there's no time! Ah, yes, Zoe, Emmerdale's schizophrenic lesbian vet. Can you hear him? And there was these scenes when um, she actually 
told Frank that she was gay. I wouldn't have been there if it wasn't what I wanted. I knew she was gay. I liked her. I just got scared. Now, Frank was a sort of person who, you know, um, couldn't accept that, that a Tate was gay. What are you telling me? You know what I'm telling you. You can't be one of those. You can't be. I don't believe you. It's true. I don't know. I don't know what possessed them to kind of turn her into a lesbian, but they did. <laughs> no. I laughed when they told me. I thought it was a joke, and then I saw they were deadly serious. I said, OK. Um, uh, and I thought they did it quite sensitively, really. Every time uh, Leary plays Zoe, every time she got a girlfriend, and then that girlfriend might have been written out, like, we'd sit there over dinner in the green room going, oh, I hope it's not me. I hope it's not me. I don't know, there's a lot of one-night stands. There were, she went through a real phase of going out clubbing and picking up various women who I have no recollection of whatsoever. And then there's one that um, Emma, who um, Zoe married, um, and then there was the nanny, and then there was Frankie. That's the women. What's wrong with a friendship? Maybe, for starters. As much as Leah's beautiful, you know, it's not something that you really, really want to do. And that was always a good thing about being at Emmerdale at seven o'clock. We couldn't do that much. Like, later, the soaps later on, they can do a bit more. But no, we, uh, we always used to really get scared in the green room when, you know, we knew that Zoe needed a new girlfriend. I will do what it takes. And once I've started, you won't be able to shut me up. <laughs> seem to be lost for words now, don't you? How dare you? Just proving that you shouldn't underestimate me either. Get out of here. I'd quite like Zoe to be happy and be a vet and a fulfilled mother and have a relationship. But the Tate's live hard, live fast lifestyle took its toll. Exit Frank with a heart attack. Sophie, call an ambulance. Then Kim in a helicopter. And finally, Chris, poisoning himself and framing his prostitute wife, Charity, for the murder. Chris! Oh, my God! Leaving his little sister, Zoe, to fight off the competition. Uh, well, Charity's one of ours. I'll do what it takes. So will I. Move out my way. Or else, you're going to have to come through me. I mean, if ever there was 